I'ma crush it. Call me. Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. This week we're coming to you from the site of a new Pittsburgh landmark in the shadow of the ruins of an old Pittsburgh landmark. We're shooting in front of the Mario Lemieux statue at Consul Energy Center, and behind that is the rubble of what used to be Mellon Arena. In today's edition of Unsung, Rosa Davis invites us in for a tour of power. In the video submission, we bring you a powerful story from inside professional wrestling. But first, let's take a look at the news from our area nonprofits. The Women and Girls Foundation's third annual Girl Gov program will be held this summer from June 16th through 19th. Girl Gov, created by teen women for teen women, is designed to provide local girls with the opportunity to learn firsthand about government and social change philanthropy. Participants will shadow a state legislator for the day and learn about current public policy issues impacting women's and girls' lives in our region. All girls entering 9th to 12th grade in the fall of 2012 who live in Allegheny, Fayette, Green, Washington, and Westmoreland counties may apply. Past Girl Gov participants may also apply. Transportation, overnight accommodation, and meals are included. There is no fee to participate. Applications are due by May 15th and are available at this address. Pittsburgh Cares has announced youth engaged in service mini grants. Pittsburgh Cares Yes grantees will receive grants ranging from $100 to $1,000 as well as planning support to organize successful projects. The organization plans to make an investment in youth-led solution for stronger communities and also benefit youth through student achievement and workforce readiness. Visit pittsburghcares.org slash mini-grants to learn more about the mini-grants program and to fill out the eligibility form. Global Links, a Pittsburgh-based international medical relief agency, is expanding its medical supply collection efforts to include a national call for the donation of current dated surplus surgical suture. The availability of surgical suture is a critical weapon in the battle against postpartum hemorrhage, one of the leading causes of death in women in resource-poor countries. Hospitals looking to participate in Global Link's suture donation program can find details at the address on the screen or they can contact Global Links at 412-361-3424 or suture at globallinks.org. Global Links accepts sterile sutures that are at least one year from expiration. Boxes as well as single packets of sutures are accepted as long as the inner foil wrapper is still intact. Global Links will cover the cost of shipment for institutions with large quantities of current sutures. Now, let's check in with Rosa Davis, Executive Director of Power. Thank you, Anthony. I'm Rosa Davis, Executive Director of Power, and I'm going to introduce you to the organization. Come on in. Let me tell you about Power. Power was established about 20 years ago to provide drug and alcohol treatment services, especially for women. We started with a 25-bed facility in Swissville in an old renovated convent, and the idea was to provide a safe space for women to come and heal after a rehab stay, for example, women that needed more treatment but also needed some support reconnecting to the community. Since that time, we've grown to all of our programs and services to include a, a full range of drug and alcohol treatment services, all designed to reflect the lives of women and really pay attention to those things that, if not unique, to women matter most to them. We have residential treatment, the 25-bed facility I mentioned in Swissville. We have three levels of outpatient treatment, ranging from maybe a once-a-week therapy session to a full day of uh, programming, three to five hours a day, five days a week. And then we have a unique program that it's not a treatment program, it's called Recovery Support. And the idea is that we pair a woman in early recovery with a mentor. And this is a paid employee who has at least five years of good recovery herself. Someone that kind of walks the journey with her. One of the things when I say men and women are different and the needs in recovery are different, women are very relational. So the thinking is that if a woman is associated with another woman who's kind of been down that road, she might be more likely to stay engaged in the recovery process and stay involved in, in treatment. We have contracts with Allegheny County. We also receive funding from the Medical Assistance Managed Care Company in our state. So if a woman has medical assistance, she can get 
funding that way, but we have to do a lot of fundraising, um, grant writing, individual donations. We appeal to corporations, foundations. We have special events, but we're really trying to think outside of the box and figure out some kind of win-win scenarios where we can generate some income to become more sustainable, but also contribute to the community. So the power collection, for example, which is a collection of unique gifts designed exclusively for power by local artists, um, is designed to um, create an opportunity for people to give back to the organization, both the artists and the business, the folks that are purchasing the items, and then in the end, the women who get to continue to come to a program like Power also benefit. I think about eight years ago, a young woman um, who had a jewelry store in Shadyside and a heart for service asked us if we wanted her to design something that would become part of a power collection and that every time she sold it she'd donate a portion of the profits. Well of course we said yes, that was amazing, we were so grateful. So we're hoping that by developing a business plan and have put some real focus that this could start to generate some income that will help sustain the organization. It would be great to be working with more artists, it would be great to get someone on board who might be interested in donating some marketing services, help us brand the collection. Once we have more items in the collection, then someone, and, and by the way, we would need artists who, one, um, have an interest or passion for our mission, and maybe in a position where they can donate some of the proceeds of anything that they would create for us. You know, in addition to funding, I think what's most important is the collection's an opportunity to tell the power story and to talk about the women who every day are working so hard to reclaim their lives from addiction. We have our big event coming up. It's Tuesday, May 22nd at Rodolf Shalom. It's called Power Promises. It's a dinner and auction. And um, Cindy Shapiro is our honorary chair. Tom Murphy is an auctioneer. Tom is one of the early founders of Power, along with Terry Miller and Dr. Mary Pat Donegan. Um, a lot of folks, Derek Chisholm, Brenda Waters, Sheldon Ingram, Sally Wigan, all come out and support us. And the highlight is that each of the anchors tell a story of a woman who has benefited from Power's programs. And it's so inspiring because you get to see for yourself firsthand what treatment can mean in the life of a woman and in her family. It may seem hopeless, it may feel like you've tried everything you possibly can try, um, but there's hope. I think that one thing I would say is at Power we have 50 employees. Half of those employees are in recovery themselves, representing more than 400 years of recovery. So as sad and devastating as the um, results can sometimes be, there's also just as many wonderful stories about women living on um, the miracles of recovery. So women who come for treatment have usually had some horrific experiences and it's hard to know what came first, you know, the drinking and drugging and then the trauma or vice versa. But I'm thinking about a, a woman, a young woman named Sherry, who I met at Power several years ago. I had come to work one morning and the staff had asked when I talked to Sherry and I wasn't sure why because I wasn't a counselor but I was happy to talk with her. And then I noticed this young woman walking down the stairs and when she slowly raised her head I could see that most of her face was scarred. I knew she had to be Sherry. It turned out that Sherry had arrived after living under a bridge for the last few months and her contact lenses were stuck in her eyes because she had been homeless and not taking care of herself. And her scars, unlike mine, the result of an accident, hers were um, a gift from her husband who intentionally set her on fire. So she had endured tremendous pain. She had been involved in this very violent relationship for a long time. And now I was meeting her at the lowest point in her life. And you know, I'm sure she thought there was no hope, but for whatever reason, she drug herself to treatment. And I remember the day I saw her because she was walking down the stairs and she literally was hanging her head. And I remember thinking when she saw me, um, and what she doesn't know is I was just as surprised, you know, when we saw each other. Um, I think she felt good to know there was someone else that looked like her that would understand. Um, the good news is that she finished treatment, she was reunited with her children, she's working full time now. And um, there are lots of stories like that, a lot of pain, but a lot of, um, a lot of success. We would love to hear from artists, tech folks, marketing folks. They would just call 412-243-7535, that's our main number, and ask for me, and I'd be happy, happy to talk to them. It's um, power-recovery.com. This week, we flash back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 281 from last August, where my colleagues talked with Gregory Iron, a professional wrestler with cerebral palsy and an amazing story. 
Iron will be one of the many on the card for Def WrestleFest coming up on April 29th. That includes Bruno San Martino and the one-legged superstar Zach Gowan. Here is a clip from that interview. Can, can you tell some people that, that maybe haven't come across you yet? Uh, you know what 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 is your story? You know. Uh, well, you know, I was born uh, with cerebral palsy, and for those of you who don't know what cerebral palsy is, uh, it's basically a disability uh, that affects my brain, and, and my the, my brain affects uh, the motor skills on the uh, right side of my body. Uh, there's different degrees of cerebral palsy. Mine's more of a mild case in which uh, it only really affects my right arm and hand, uh, and, and partially my leg. Basically, the muscles are tightened on the, that, the right side of my body. Uh, I can't flip over my wrist. Uh, I can't flip over my arm. Have very limited use of it. Um, but from an early age, um, you know, I didn't think there was anything different than me until I got in school. Uh, I was kind of teased and made fun of by other kids. That's when I kind of started to realize, I, I guess I'm a little different and I do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, that hurt me. Uh, my grandma, she actually got me into wrestling and wrestling kind of kept my mind off of all the bad things happening in my life. Not only was I being made fun of in school, uh, but my parents would get into physical altercations a lot of the times. Uh, my mom was, uh, into drugs. Uh, she got more heavily into the drugs when my grandma passed away of bone cancer. And because my grandma got me attached to wrestling, it was something I kind of latched onto. It was something that kind of guided me away from all the bad things in life. And it didn't matter if I was being evicted from a house or if my mom was gone for, you know, a day or weeks on end or if my parents were fighting. Uh, one thing that kept my mind on all the positives in life and kept me motivated was pro wrestling. And somehow, some way I wanted to be a part of wrestling. I just never thought I would as a wrestler. And when I turned 16, I saw Zach Allen. I saw what he could do. I was inspired to begin weightlifting. And I guess that's kind of how the journey began. Uh, when I turned 19, I decided I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to go to Cleveland All Pro Wrestling Training School with Josh Prohibition. And I'm going to try to train to be a professional wrestler. And from that moment on, just kind of never stopped with Josh Prohibition and Johnny Gargano's help. I became a pro wrestler. <laughs> and uh, and I've seen you in a few matches here again up in up in PWO on on the television show uh, down here. I, I think you made a few stops with uh, IWC. Um, and, and it's really, it's not something that, that really sticks out. I mean, it, 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 when you're out there wrestling, you know, um, you, you, you seem like somebody that can hang it, hang with the best of them out there. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, if there's one thing that you know, I've been saying a lot lately, um, that I've been trying to prove for, for the last five years, I didn't want to be looked at as just another character or gimmick, if you will, mm -hmm. a guy with a disability just going on, just going on as gimmick. I wanted to be able to go out there and say, I can hang with any wrestler out there, no matter the size, no matter the shape, no matter the skill. I can go out there and have one of the best matches on the show, despite a disability. And I'd like to think that, you know, it took me a couple of years to get uh, to get where I'm at, but uh, I'd like to think that I overcome a lot of doubters. On Sunday, May 27th, the Port Authority of Allegheny County will open up the Carnegie Busway to allow supporters of Special Olympics PA to hit the pavement and run the first ever 6K on the busway in support of over 20,000 Special Olympic PA athletes. Runners and walkers of all levels as well as families are welcome. Registration information is available at the address on your screen. Hip hop and politics converge on stage at the Most Wanted Fine Art Gallery on April 20th from 7 to 11 p.m. Politicians and MCs will share the mic and encourage people to get out and vote. Most Wanted is located at 5015 Penn Avenue in the Garfield neighborhood. Pause Up for Cancer takes place May 6th at Camp Bow Wow in Highland Park. Cost is $10 per dog. 100% of the proceeds go to Leukemia Lymphoma Society. At the Pause Up for Cancer event, there will be a number of vendors for you to check out, games for your dog to play, a special area for toy and teacup breeds, and a free play area for the dogs to play as they please. Humans can enjoy refreshments and Chinese auction items. Details are on Facebook at the address on your screen. Thanks for watching this episode of Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time.
So I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually The whole hood after me Masterpiece I out in a pace car And these dudes f***ing mad Cause they can't even find a day job I stay hard with or without Viagra And I said the flow crush Like the force of Niagara I'm after a major label budget But since I'm not pop top 40 They all scared to touch it